Good day, this is Weekly Wind Up with me, Dave Hodgson. Today, we're extending our boundaries a little to cover some aspects of Calderdale. In addition to Kirklees, of course, following the sad demise of Calderdale TV. This week, I'm really pleased to have, as a guest, MP Holly Lynch. Holly, thanks very much indeed for joining us on KLTV. Now, you've been an MP for a while now, when were you first elected and how did it come about? Yeah, so it's been a real whirlwind for me. I was only selected seven weeks before the general election. A very intense and short, quick selection campaign and then seven weeks quite intense campaigning uh, in May of last year. Um, so yeah, it's been a real whirlwind and a bit of a baptism of fire since then. I can imagine because it, it, getting your face known around Calderdale is no mean feat with, uh, with lots of appearances and lots of leaflets. That's it, yeah, and you're right, and I'm from Halifax, I've lived there almost all of my life. Mm -hmm. You think you know your hometown, but actually when you become the Member of Parliament for it, it's the level of detail, the level of expertise <laughs> you're expected to have. To yeah, that's it, so there's an awful lot to learn and, and take in, and of course, you've got to get your head wrapped around Westminster uh, as well. And that comes on to the next question. How long did it take you to acclimatise to actually being an MP and working out of Westminster? I don't think I'll ever really acclimatise to really? Westminster. I mean, it's such an unusual workplace. Just the space itself, it's such a big place. We call it the parliamentary estate. It's actually five buildings all in one. So it takes you a while to get your bearings. You have to get used to speaking in rhyme and rhythm and, and the words that people use in the chamber. So that all takes a while to get used to. Are you rehearsed in where to boo and hiss or shout yeah, and I mean, Shouting here, here is so unnatural when you first go and you just want to clap yeah. instead, but that's very much frowned upon. Yeah. So all of that takes a bit of getting used to, yeah. And, and it's not true how spitting image you have it. You don't throw paper airplanes at one another, do No, you? that's it. And of course, you've got newsoids that's recently been uh, taking the oh, mick yes. at politicians' expenses, but you know... Oh, you've arrived funny, when you've appeared funny on stuff. newsoids. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> one of the subjects on which uh, you've pressed the government, by the way, is regarding some police procedures of assault on individual police officers. What, what are you calling for? Well, in the process of doing this job, I spent a shift, a full shift, with police officers in my constituency. Um, I'm really concerned that because we've lost 1,200 police officers across West Yorkshire, increasingly officers have been sent out on their own that, to respond actually, to emergencies. Have we actually lost them? We have. Uh, or was it cuts or was it just they decided? Well, quite right, yeah. yeah so. The, they were predominantly officers coming to the end of their careers, retiring, but there are officers and posts that have not been filled. Mm -hmm. So that's the reduction that we've seen in the numbers yeah. in frontline officers since the 2010 general election. So increasingly they're out on their own. We've seen this uh, increase in assaults on police officers and, and I saw that very much through my experience of being out with them. I was in a situation that escalated quite quickly. I ended up ringing 999 from a police car to ring, to ring for backup because I was so concerned for the officer that I was with. So on the back of that, I've secured an adjournment debate in Westminster to raise that experience and then talk about why have we seen these increase in assaults on officers? What do they need to be safe? Um, and we need to make sure that they're safe so that the public are safe. If they're not able to go about their business protecting us, then that's not good for anybody. Uh, I think uh, a statement that Margaret Thatcher once made uh, that you can't solve any problem by throwing money at it is not quite... Correct, is it? No, well, we, we know that we need, uh, you know, police officers on our streets and actually they need to be paid. So there is that correlation. Of course, we all want to see efficiencies where the scope to do that. But actually, we've now cut to the bone and that's had a direct impact on, on the capacity of what police officers can do and how safe they are in doing that. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to be asking the government to respond to. But then thinking about sentencing for those who are assaulting officers, particularly repeat offenders, how do we make sure that there is a deterrent, mm. that we know that officers are out there keeping us safe, representing, um, you know, re representing us, we make the laws, it's up <laughs> to them to go and enforce them. So yeah. we have a responsibility as politicians to make sure that they are safe in they doing that do work. I, I, I re read in a horrendous uh, piece uh, not very long ago in the Metro that said that actually magistrates have been told to cut down on sentences and it's not three strikes you're out but it could be up to ten before they'll do anything but give somebody that's done something like that just a caution and don't do it again. Yeah you're absolutely right we know there's pressure on our, our prisons we know there is a cost associated with the prison sentence 
but we've got to think about what we're trying to achieve with prison sentences. You know, there is a deterrent there. If we're not upholding these deterrents, then what does that, you know, what message is that sending out to people? Quick, quick, uh, quick change of subject. Where do you stand or sit on, on the Brexit debate? So I worked in export trade in my constituency in Halifax um, prior to becoming an MP. I also then went on to work for our members of the European Parliament. So I saw firsthand what it means in terms of trade, very much for my constituency. But the good work that our MEPs are doing and why it matters and putting uh, what the UK would like to see at the heart of the European Union. So I was really quite sad to see that we'd voted to come out of the European Union. Of course, the challenge for us now is that we've got to make the most of it. I'm really keen to make sure that the UK gets a good deal as we go into this process and make sure that we maintain those jobs and trade in Halifax, which is what obviously I'm uh, so committed That's, to. That is your job, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, quite. Absolutely. Jeremy Corbyn's, now that he's been re-established as leader of the Labour Party, but there still seems to be civil war active. Uh, what are your views on what should happen? Well, speaking to a lot of my colleagues, everybody recognises that we have been through what's been quite a difficult and painful period of soul-searching in the Labour Party. We've had the leadership election. There's been a very convincing uh, message come back from the members that Jeremy is the leader. As we've been through this process, the polls have been, you know, really quite heartbreaking for the Labour Party. In constituencies like mine in Halifax, with a very tight majority of 428, we have had to really ask ourselves some difficult questions about where we're going, and what are the key priorities for us. I really hope we've done some of that and everybody is mindful that we have got to be an effective opposition mm -hmm. to the government. Even lifelong Conservative voters recognise that we've got to be a good opposition to keep them in line. So we're focused on getting, uh, getting on with that process now and I think everybody is going to come together to do that. Uh, finally, Holly, if I could just uh, ask you to remind us and your constituents, where they can find you in Halifax? Yes, yeah, certainly. So I'm at the Elsie Whiteley Innovation Centre, just on Hotwood Lane. Uh, so please do get in touch if there's anything I can help them with. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Holly Lynch, MP for Halifax. Hope we can talk again to you soon, sometime in the future. Thanks to the crew and the news desk for the production of Weekly Wind-Up, and especially to you, my loves, for watching KLTV. If you've got any views or comments on this or any other programmes on KLTV, email us at info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or follow us on Twitter or Facebook. I'm Dave Hodgson. Stay lucky. Bye. Thank you.